Welcome to Coming Home, Survive and Thrive in Homeschooling. This week, once again, we have an adult homeschooler being interviewed for his own reflections on his childhood. David did not go to public kindergarten or school. Instead, being homeschooled from early childhood through to finishing his high school years, qualifying for university. An interview such as this is helpful for parents wanting to learn straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, to hear if there are things to seriously consider in planning for their own children. It will also be helpful for your children to hear from someone who knows what this life is like and therefore can trust their experience and encouragement if needed. David is our son, and along with his older brother Nathan, are responsible for me getting this podcast off the ground, and I am grateful. Nathan's interview can be found in episode number 14. Let's hear now from David. I do remember when we went up to the university and we met the head of department, and you would have mm. been, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16. One of the things he said was that in engineering, there are no boxes. It's really important for an engineer not to be confined or restricted by the edges or the boundaries that they have been taught to. They need to be able to move fluidly so that there are no squares because how are engineers going to design and make things if they get to this arbitrary type boundary? And I remember sitting in the in the office with you and Dad was there too, mm. and I thought, that's brilliant because that's just how David thinks. So I get why the classroom setting was a challenge. Yeah. And it's interesting too because like some of the older universities, like I'm thinking Cambridge, Oxford, when you sit your exams, much of it is you actually go in and sit down with your lecturers and you have to present orally. That's your exam. Yeah, really, yeah. Well, yeah, and, and I think if, if I had chosen for whatever reason with you and Dad to maybe go to Auckland Uni as an alternative uni, I would have done far worse because pretty much all of Auckland's way of doing things is textbook exams assignments textbook exams mm-hmm. very few projects they are way more confined to ways of doing things obviously they still think outside of the box but where Massey well known and shines with with engineering is blue sky opportunities with the projects every single semester and I was for my third year the engineering representative for Massey so I was around all the other representatives at a couple of conferences Obviously, coming out with an engineering degree is quite shocking looking back at <laughs> how much I didn't enjoy maths and, and, and things like that. But I could, I, I could definitely tell the gaps I had. It's like my first semester at uni, I bombed my first test completely. But I was sitting there just going, like, this is this is crazy. This is so foreign to me, <laughs> sitting in a, a test room with everybody being quiet and nobody able to talk to each other. And, and it was just so foreign to me. The classrooms, even doing assignments and testing, it was just everything was weird. How long did it take you to feel like you could catch up with that experience so that it was no longer alien? Oh, I think I was, I was always struggling with it, even all the way through to fourth year, the idea of, you, you get better at testing. I came out of a lot of exams and tests thinking I knew how to do that stuff, but the stress of a test or an exam or the way that my brain, I suppose, solves problems or wants to solve things, I didn't feel like the tests were good for me. I always thought I knew more than what the test answer gave, um, which is funny. I used to stand up on a whiteboard, you know, days before exams, teaching other people the problems and how to solve them. And, you know, there were times when there were 10 to 15 people watching me on the whiteboard <laughs> solve problems. And I used to laugh at the results when they came out because some of them would come in and, and they would have gotten 80% plus 80 to 90% of the test. And they were really happy, but I got 60 to 70. And they'd be like, what? But you were teaching me this stuff. How did you not do better? And... I didn't feel like I was ever good with exams or testing, but I always found sitting in a group with my mates was the best way to learn for me. So maybe if the exam had been presented in in a way that was more friendly to the way your mind worked, do you think that would have been different? Because it really is like a one-size-fits-all exam approach, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I definitely didn't, didn't do well with those sorts of tests. But anything project-based, like with my hands, where I had to go in and come up with my own solutions, 
build and test them I found that to be way more fun but also I came out with better results so project based stuff but I do remember thinking at the end of first semester because I think my first semester results were a C plus and that was in programming two C's and a D um, and obviously a D's a fail I had to sit down with the Dean of First Year Engineering who essentially have said, what's up? Why'd you get these grades? Is there something you need to do better at? You know, what do you need to focus better? What is it? Do you even want to do engineering? And it was kind of the first time I thought to myself, do I want to do engineering? Because I realized I can't remember having a conversation with you about what I do after school. I must have been like 14, 13 or 14. And you brought up, I think I know what you would be good at coming out of school. I think you'd really enjoy engineering, probably because how much I enjoyed playing with Lego and other things like that, and building and breaking things. But yeah, I, I, yeah, up until that point, even the first semester of uni, I realized that maybe I wasn't there because I wanted to do it. So I remember coming away from that conversation with my dean, thought about it, and I think I walked away after a few days thinking about it, going, okay, I, I do want to do engineering. I am here because I want to do it, not just because mum or dad pushed me in that direction. And the next semester, I got two Bs and two B pluses. So I decided at that point that I wanted to do better, and I did do better <laughs> from that point on. I think the semester after that, I think I got an A, two A minuses, and a B plus. No, it was a B minus. And that B minus was maths again. Yeah, I still found testing hard and assignments hard and the classroom hard, but I actually made a decision that I, I wanted to do engineering. See, somebody else who is in our family said that it isn't so much where you do your your degree or even what you got for it, it's what you do with it after it. They know all your lecturers what you really are capable of. Yeah, you get you get your drop kicks and you get your you know academic ones that are just in the textbooks all day long. But at the end of the day, you know, when you leave uni, I think that's that's where you either shine or don't. And it's funny, there's a couple of my good mates at, at, at uni. They were on paper, you know, some of the worst students in, in my year. But coming out of uni, they're some of the fastest growing in terms of their career because uni wasn't for them. You know, with correct guidance and, and oversight, I was allowed to be the student contract the workshop to look after the laser cutter for an entire year. And my job was once a week to set up the laser cutter, run jobs for students and industry, and maintain the machine. Now, to some people, it sounds incredibly boring, but to me, it was awesome. Yeah, and that's helped me hugely in my career to date. You were blessed to have lecturers who could see the potential in you, and they knew you were more than what your grades were giving back. Yeah, there was, well, there was, there was one lecturer in my first year, and it was actually second semester, so this, this semester I was trying to put in a bit more effort, and it was the project paper, and we were all in the classroom chilling, just waiting around, just, just talking You know, a week later, and the lecturer comes in with all the results and starts walking around giving the, the results sheets to each student. And I remember him coming up to me and giving me my results, and he's like, David, I'm actually really disappointed. I thought you'd do a lot better. And I remember sitting there at the time thinking, like, I feel really crap. But looking back at it, I realized what he was saying. He knew what I was capable of even in the first year, second semester. I remember a couple of my mates, you know, afterwards just waiting for him to leave and then just laughing and like kind of with me, but also at me. And I was just shaking my head like, what just happened? And I was a bit angry, but, but I, I realized that actually pushed me to do better. And I remember in my final report, I wanted to prove him wrong <laughs> and I put in way more work and got an A grade and he in a way overturned what he said. So David, what do you think were the advantages of being homeschooled? I, th I got to do, I think, more outside of just schooling than any other, at least person that went to school that I, I knew. So you know, I used to rave to people that I'd only do schoolwork from 9 till 12 and then I'd have the whole afternoon free. And obviously it wasn't necessarily you know, free free mum mum and dad would restrict us to time on computer or get us outside doing things. But it was those extra things that I got to do outside of the designated curriculum, I suppose, that I look back on and am really thankful for. Hanging out with friends. Obviously if you're at school you get to see them every day, but because I ended at twelve some days or whatever, I got to go and, and hang out with some of my close homeschool mates quite regularly. So even today I, I have amazing bonds with them still so I'm, I'm 26 and I've been friends with one of them since he was four and I was five so some of the bonds I created I, I don't know if I could have created those and sustained those at school I think anybody that goes to school knows that there's a level to why you're friends with them and that's because you go to the same school and you're in the same classes whereas when you're homeschooled you you need to make good bonds and keep them if you want to have, have a good social life and 
I think a big thing about homeschooling that was great is that um, I wasn't forced into doing anything academically that I didn't want to do. So I remember mum and dad sending me off to chemistry one day, two day workshops with a bunch of other homeschoolers and just hating it. You know, there was a little assignment testy thing that we had to do at the end of each day. It was a two day thing. And I just looked at the piece of paper and I just realized I haven't listened at all. I enjoyed, you know, igniting the Bunsen burner and burning a piece of, you know, magnesium or something like that. But I just, (laughs) chemistry is not my thing. Reading textbooks on like biology, yes, there were some things that interested me, but I just, again, just ugh, did not enjoy it. And obviously you you can't just say no and and not do everything um, just because you don't enjoy it. So mum and dad were good at pushing what I needed to do. But yeah, the, the being able to choose where I, where I would go. And early, like I said, I, you know, I, we knew I was going to go do something engineering related when I was about 14. So I got to do essentially only what I wanted slash needed to do to head towards that. Can you think of anything on the, the negative, the disadvantages side, if you like? I mean, bearing in mind, as we know, there's no approach to education that is just perfect. But nevertheless, there will be people who will want to know what, looking back, would you say would be a disadvantage? I look back now and wish I had certain things instilled in me or I uh, wish I was better at at a younger age to be better now uh, in my career. So one of those things uh, which I've thought about is almost growing the muscle of finishing things. The idea that it's easy to start something, it's pretty tough in the middle, but to finish something, whether it be a project, a task, a little, whatever it might be, I can't really pinpoint what could have been better, but I don't feel like I've got a very good middle project or finishing muscle. Like I'm great at starting things, I'm very enthusiastic and I jump right in, but I don't think I'm very good at finishing things. And I look at some of my peers who did go through the schooling system and were diligent and they're very good at finishing things. So, you know, you give them a task now as an engineer, they get it done. So I don't know how that might correlate back to homeschooling, but you know, as a as a parent who's maybe looking to homeschool their kids, they might not want to finish a project or a task or that piece of reading or maths or something, but instilling early on to, to finish what you start. Uh, the idea of sort of a cumulative era over the years, because obviously schooling, you, know, you start at five and you end at 18. There's a lot of years to be learning things and you obviously take progressive steps each year to get better and more, do more difficult maths or, or physics or whatever. But I found that doing nine or 10 year old maths, I maybe understood 70 to 80% you know, at 10 years old. And then I go on to being 11 years old and I take a step up in maths and it's new maths, it's new concepts. And then I have to learn those and I might get 70 or 80 percent of that knowledge and then you go all the way until you're year 13 doing you know, advanced maths calculus and linear algebra and, and things like that and i realize there's a lot of gaps in my knowledge because i didn't understand maths very well all the way through each year you get a lot of a cumulative error sal khan actually the guy who, who started khan academy said that's actually one of the biggest issues in schooling in general so and that, that i think that affected me a lot with sort of the hard sciences and massive when i did my engineering degree um, how did those gaps happen and why didn't we as your parents not realize that there were gaps is, is that a reflection of the uh you said you weren't very experienced in testing how did you end up going from one chapter to another without us realizing that (laughs) one reason and probably the main one i was very good at finding ways around actually knowing the stuff and just wanting to move on for the sake of moving on not actually knowing the stuff Uh, just because i just found it so boring or or whatever and i didn't want to put in that that work but i didn't have a maths tutor until first year of high school and then it sort of got progressively more involved as i got closer and closer to my um year 13 stuff so I think if I had more diligent, focused mass education, for example, and I didn't leave the table until I understood it, even if that meant getting the tutor at a younger age, I think that a cumulative error would have been minimized. One of my really good friends, I remember talking to his mum about the schooling because he would just ace maths. Yeah, I think he had 100% in his NCA level threes in calculus and physics. And then one of the papers in third year engineering, uh, he was 0.25% of 100% in the paper. Like he's just super, super smart. Um, and I remember jokingly asking his mom, you know, why is he like this? And she was very diligent from a young age to not let him leave until he understood all of the concepts. Sort of like puzzle pieces, I suppose. You need to understand each puzzle piece before you can bring it together and, and make the puzzle. And when you get to pretty high level calculus or linear algebra, you're taking a lot of concepts to solve one 
complex solution. Uh, and I think there are lots of puzzle pieces I missed, mm. um, but he had them. See, it's interesting, when I did the interview with Marcia, Mrs. Maths, one of the things she said just happened over and over again, the gap in the students coming through, right through public school, right Mm -hmm. into high school where she is teaching, just never ceased to amaze her just how gappy they were and how they had to go back and just redo and redo. So it seems to me that it's the responsibility of whoever is responsible for the education of that child whether it's a school teacher and it's very easy for them just to go well they'll be with someone else next year and just pass them on but if you're a homeschool parent Mm. you have taken on that full responsibility you haven't delegated and the responsibility does fall very firmly at our feet Mm. so I'm sure you'll agree, Mum, I'm, I'm way more visual of a person. So maybe part of the reason why I really didn't engage with mathematical concepts is because uh, I couldn't really see the point at all. But there was also well, very little alternative ways of trying to understand concepts in a, maybe a more visual way where I would have gone, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, and maybe that's why I was drawn a bit more to physics, because obviously physics has a lot of mathematical concepts in it as well. But the first time I hear about the idea of force as a concept is foreign to me. I need to understand that. But if you go, okay, well, here's mass accelerated when that hits the wall. That's how much force it has. Yeah, I think I was way better with physics, but I do remember using lollies to help me understand concepts. And maybe it was the lollies, but also just the fact that I could see things in front of me. Now that you are in, well and truly, into the adult world, what differences do you see between yourself, a homeschooled adult, and those who went through the public school system? Does it become clear to you who is and isn't? I think the school people are way better at the nine to five schedule structure of work life. They get there on time and they leave on time. There's sort of, but with someone like me, I find that there is no clock. It, my brain's always active. I'm always not necessarily always working, but I'm like always thinking about work. And that's probably a testament to how sort of open and free homeschooling was. You know, I'm way more random and exploratory than other school people I know. But like I said, I think that lack of structure also hurts me in terms of not being able to finish things. Are you learning to finish things better now? Yeah. There's been many instances where I've not finished something and you know, had to pay whatever consequence came from that to realize the importance of finishing something. But if you don't finish, you don't get what you want. What do you think a homeschool parent could do more of, but also less of? How would you advise? One of the benefits of homeschooling is how much time you can spend around your parents and family. We got to do a lot of stuff together. But I think I I would have enjoyed more hands-on doing, building, exploring activities, maybe with someone like Dad. I remember a couple of instances that I wanted to like build a go-kart or build a hut or something like that. I mean, to be fair, I think I'm I'm quite blessed to look back at it and how good of a childhood and also the homeschooling experience So, with your observations in our house and other houses, what maybe should they do less of? First thing that comes to mind, and this happened way too often, was parents that were just way too over strict. I mean, some of my my mates, until halfway through our teens, weren't even allowed to do sleepovers. They weren't able to hang past like 8pm at night. Obviously, you've, as a parent, you've got to have you know, your restrictions and, and you're the one raising that child to be exposed to this or that or not. But in the homeschool community, there was just way too much protection way too often. Uh, even actually looking back at it now uh, with some of the my peers, there are things I look at and go, well, you're in your early to mid-20s, but you're behaving like a teenager because I think you weren't inv- like, exposed to certain things earlier on. To, to still restrict them all the way through their teens, not allow them to be boys and go outside and just hang on the beach and climb trees and break things, or even just hang out, like I said, after 8 p.m. is it was just really weird. It is a difficult one for parents now because one of the reasons that modern homeschool is exploding in numbers is the parents are very concerned and rightly so, with what their children are being taught in school. Or just exposed to as well, not just being taught, but just exposed to. I mean, children deserve to have their innocence as children retained Mm. for as long as possible without it becoming dysfunctional. And it's that kind of it. There's a very grey area where parents really struggle with. Black and whites are easy, but it's this big, massive grey in the middle Mm. where parents have to decide 
Where am I being overprotective? And where do I need to let my child go and take the risk of them making a mistake or being exposed to something? But that's a risk a parent has to take and only individual parents can make that decision. But I hope that parents who are listening can consider that carefully and find ways to work that out in a functional, constructive way so mm. that when their homeschool kids now, once they're adults, aren't looking back and going, but mum, I should have known about that. You need to make sure that they know what life is there. I mean, I know many homeschool people who didn't leave home even right after uni. Whatever the reasoning is, sometimes I look at them or, or the, that reasoning and go, well, I think you're just so tied still to that parent life where you weren't actually let go enough to be able to almost be your own person. And I saw other homeschools too that their parents were way too chill. And those kids can't exactly say they came out of homeschooling being very good either. You know, the, lots of mistakes were made. Some of them went down pretty bad paths. So it goes both ways. Can you think of other things that you would like to bring up that you think would be helpful for other homeschool parents listening or even homeschool teens who might be listening? If I was talking to a 15-year-old me, I'd be trying to stress that like teens, not easy. University, not easy. If you want to be an ambitious person, you need to be more diligent. They, these things just don't come to you. It's so easy in your teens. You want to go and hang out with your friends and play games. And I could have done with a chat from older self. Do you think that would have been good to come from somebody else? It wouldn't have been easy to take it from your parents because they were always... Get you off know. my back, mom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, perhaps it's, it's it's somebody else, you know, a good stiff talking to from, from somebody else whom you, well, first of all, respect. Secondly, who doesn't have those emotional attachments of the parent-child relationship. I wonder if that might be a helpful thing for some teens. Well, especially in your teens, because I think that's any, any, any parent with a, a teenage son knows how difficult a teenage boy can be. And at the end of the day, you have to make the decision for yourself to want to do something or want to be better. But for somebody to tell you or to advise you, or, or sometimes when, even when you're too diligent, I mean, there's times when I've spent too much time and effort on one thing and I've missed out on other opportunities and I look back and I'm like, it wasn't worth it at that time. Well, if you could go back and visit, let's see, your eight or nine-year-old self, what would you say to your young self? I'd probably say uh, get out and shoot more basketball hoops because the one thing that I regret not doing more of was, was actually taking basketball any further. Even, you know, being in 26 now, I just, uh, not the only thing, but it's one of the only things that gets me childishly excited is going to play basketball. So to think I could have done that as a career, and maybe that would have destroyed it for me, you know, the day in and day out games, the injuries, you know, constant physio and, and working out or whatever might have destroyed that passion, but I wish I'd been more diligent <laughs> and, and at taking basketball somewhere further. I was always scared to do that. More generally speaking, I was always just having a good time with somebody. <laughs> like I had some I had really good friends around the neighborhood, in the bush, building huts, writing things down the driveway, playing pretend games. It was a lot of fun. I don't think I would change anything. If you had a parent come and ask you now, David, they were seriously thinking of homeschooling, what kind of advice would you actually give them? Would you recommend it for a start? And if so, what's their next step? I think I would always recommend it. Whatever sort of personality your kid is, as long as you as a parent are diligent in trying to understand their needs and their learning styles and their wants and, and what they enjoy doing and, and maybe help to sort of draw that out of them, I don't think there's any better way than homeschooling. With homeschooling, I think you have a chance to really draw out of your kid the potential they have. But I really enjoyed sports and I ended up really enjoying designing or making and breaking, playing with Lego and trying to create you know, pretty awesome structures and homeschooling gave me that ability. I think every little kid has potential, but a lot of it just gets completely squashed by the public school. I mean, even looking back, I just have the most huge respect for mum and dad to be able to do that with five kids. Each one of us now have degrees and we're on our own little paths. Um, I think they did a really good job. Thank you, David. Really appreciate your honesty and the benefit that listening homeschool parents and potentially their children listening will, will gain from it thank you yeah. very much for carefully considering the answers i appreciate it